The gastrointestinal pathogen panel is a PCR panel that rapidly detects 22 different organisms that can cause diarrhea. It does it all at the same time, and it does it in just over an hour. The panel includes 13 bacteria, four parasites, and five viruses. And the bacteria include Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, Plesiomonas shigalloides, Salmonella, Yersinia, Vibrio, and then there's a separate call for Vibrio cholerae, and then a number of diarrheogenic E. coli and Shigella, including enteroaggregative E. coli, enteropathogenic E. coli, enterotoxigenic E. coli, shigatoxin-producing E. coli, including E. coli O157, and then Shigella and enteroinvasive E. coli. The parasites are Cryptosporidium, Cyclospora, Antimoebal histolytica and Giardia. And then the five viruses are adenovirus, astrovirus, norovirus, rotavirus, and sapovirus. So 22 total different targets. This is a, a test for patients who have diarrhea, but it's not a test for every patient who has diarrhea. You probably have had an episode of diarrhea in the past that just got better on its own. And so we're recommending that for patients who have a very short duration of diarrhea, less than seven days, for example, who don't have any warning signs or risk factors for severe disease, they don't even need to have any testing done. They're just going to get better on their own. Some of the warning signs that we um, highlight are fever, bloody diarrhea, dysentery, severe abdominal pain, dehydration or hospitalization, as well as immunocompromised state. Another group of patients who really shouldn't be tested with this is the group of patients who might have Clostridium difficile. Those are patients, for example, who might be in the hospital for several days, get antibiotics, develop diarrhea. We're really thinking about Clostridium difficile as a diagnosis. They don't need this whole panel. They just need to be tested for Clostridium difficile. So who does need to be tested? The patient with community-acquired diarrhea of seven or more days duration, a patient with travel-related diarrhea, or a patient with diarrhea where they have warning signs or risk factors for severe disease. Another group of patients we found that really isn't appropriate for this test is a patient with chronic diarrhea. So someone has, who's had diarrhea for months on end probably doesn't make sense to run this whole panel. This is really for the patient who has relatively acute diarrhea. I think first of all you'll recognize uh, a lot of the targets that are on this panel as things that laboratories would have tested for in the past but maybe one by one or for just a small number of them at a time for example with stool cultures so you'll know as a clinician what to do with the results but you'll also know that they vary depending on what's detected so with 22 targets it depends on what has been found and sometimes we're finding more than one of these picked up in the same patient not surprisingly. And also, what's going on with the patient? How sick are they? What other diseases do they have? So you'll be thinking about things such as, does this organism warrant treatment with a specific drug? Do I simply manage this patient symptomatically, make sure they stay hydrated, and uh, uh, this will get better on its own? Do I need to put this patient in any kind of isolation? For example, if they're in the hospital, we don't want to transmit some of these organisms from one patient to another. Or if the patient, for example, is in a setting such as a daycare setting, or maybe there's someone who works in food preparation, is there anything special that is warranted for them so that they don't transmit whatever organism they might have to other individuals who they are around. So it's really going to vary depending on what is detected. Uh, there are other causes of diarrhea beyond what is on this panel, but it is a very comprehensive panel as far as causes of diarrhea. Uh, the advantage in terms of ordering is it's very easy to order because the clinician doesn't need to, to think about um, exactly which tests to order. Do they want to order, you know, testing for one or two or three of these? They get everything. Obviously, that can be a disadvantage too in terms of getting a lot of information, but overall an advantage. And the other advantage is that this is a, a test that offers testing for some organisms that we really haven't offered testing for in the past. An example is sapovirus. We never had a test for that organism before, and there's some others on this panel as well. 
And finally, the big advantage I would say is that it's rapid. So this test is done and resulted in a little over an hour. And the way that we've set up to do this is we run it right away as soon as the specimen arrives in our microbiology laboratory. And I just looked at our quality data today, and on average, after a specimen comes in and gets run on this, uh, the time from receipt to reporting is just over two hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we're really able to get out a rapid result. So what we've done is we've come up with guidelines for the laboratory testing for infectious causes of diarrhea, and this can be found on the Mayo Medical Laboratory's website. It guides clinicians through test ordering, including when to order the gastrointestinal pathogen panel and when to order some other tests. Because there are times when other testing is appropriate, and I have mentioned some of them before, such as Clostridium difficile testing. So we want people to have some guidance as to when testing would be appropriate, when it would not be appropriate, when alternative testing would be appropriate, and so on and so forth.